that's a good a good point that that the theories are always descriptions of the territory right they're never the actual thing in of itself and um, i know that you right. have a kind of background in meditation as well right where i feel like you you actually get to kind of experience the terrain of experience itself um through meditation yes for for the last 18 years i've, I've been meditating um regularly and and so that's a different avenue toward encountering reality. So in science, I'm encountering it through the, through the senses and through mathematics and experiment. And in meditation, encountering it, in the best cases, without any concepts at all, it, just in, in utter silence and, and letting go of concepts. And it, start to come with the idea that if you want to actually go beyond the limits of your current conceptual framework, you have to let go of your conceptual framework totally. And then something novel can come, come out of that and, and you can go to, to new and deeper levels. Um, so, so yes, it's, it's a fun exploration. Uh, life is stunningly amazing. I'm, I'm, it's a privilege to be alive. I feel like, a kid that's just like, whoa, I mean, what, what have I been put into? This is just truly amazing. I just want to understand as much as I possibly can about this. And, and meditation, uh, to my surprise, seems to be, you know, I mean, if you'd asked me 20 years ago, I would have said, yeah, well, if you want to de-stress, great. But it's, it's more, it, it, it is a de-stressor, but it's, it's, it's really a loosening up of your conceptual system to, to embrace deeper um, sets of concepts. Yeah, I think um, that's something I wish, uh, especially more scientists could know, because once you experience what it's like to to know things without words, without concepts, to kind of intuitively apprehend things without using conceptual machinery, it's so obvious that it's a valid form of exploration or, or you know, gathering certain kinds of knowledge. But if you talk to someone, if you were to talk to yourself 20 years ago before you'd meditated, I think you're filtering through your concepts. So you just say, I, I, I don't, non-conceptual sounds like nothingness basically. So it uh, doesn't really make sense. Right. How could you possibly learn from that? And, and what, what, what possible benefit could it, could it be to you? There is um, a, a metaphor. And I won't push it harder than just saying it's an interesting metaphor about this. And it comes from um, quantum computing. So in, in quantum computing, it's an interesting, I mean, many people may have, programmed in Pascal and C and so forth. But if you start playing with quantum computing, it's a very, very different kind of thing. You, you, you can't copy bits, right? So there's no cloning theorem. So you, 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 in order, you, you have to be able to program something in which you can't copy bits. Also, in, in the program, if you look at it while it's executing, uh, you destroy the program in quantum <laughs> computing. So, so how do you, you know, Create a program where you can't inspect what's going on inside, the, what the state of it, while it's going on, or you destroy it. You can't clone bits. It's a completely different way. But what, what, what you find is in quantum computing, so you have to use the, the most advanced concepts that we've discovered to actually set up the quantum bits and the quantum gates. So it's all hard-nosed science, mathematics, rigor, and so forth. Then you start the computation. Now you have to let go completely. You cannot peek. If you try to trace the program or look at it anyway, you destroy it. So here you have this, this interesting, on the one hand, the most precise concepts, the most tech, the precise technology are needed. And then an absolute letting go. You cannot look at it at all. You have to completely let go. And when you do, you unleash this incredible horsepower that we're still trying to understand. I mean, People are trying to explain it in terms of multiverses and so forth, but it's an overwhelming amount of horsepower. And then at the end, you once again go back into this conceptual system, hard-nosed, technical, and you look at the state of the quantum bits and you get a little thimble full of the torrent of power that was unleashed, but, but it's greater than you can get from classical. And, and so we see in nature, in our most technical areas, in quantum computing, this very interesting back and forth between hard-nosed scientific technological rigor and then a complete silence and then back to the rigor and somehow what what isn't rewarded is half-baked silly ideas right is it, imprecision is not rewarded so we're, re, we're rewarded for 
absolute precision, a mathematical precision, and then utter silence. What we're not rewarded for repeatedly is sloppy thinking. <laughs> yeah, that's a wonderful analogy. You know, um, the idea of the kind of wisdom of surrender and going with your intuitive kind of flow, you know, is, is well attested to in things like Zen and, and stuff. And, and I think that's, it points to a, a really, a really, um, a deep truth, especially about biology, but more about natural systems in general, that, that a lot of what they're doing is it, things unfold lawfully in a way that's aligned. Um, and on the flip side, you can interfere and, and try to control things. And there's a, there's a time and a place for that. But the wisdom that comes, right. I think, with meditation is, is the wisdom of both. You know, I can be in my problem solving mind some of the time, but then if I don't need to be anxiously thinking about anything, I can let go and just let my, my kind of organism do what it's going to do. That's right. And in the silence, often new insights come from directions you couldn't predict. Mm 